Awesome. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Meet the Execs. I'm your host, Brandon Pankey. I'm really excited to have our next guest here. Um, she is the Executive Vice President of Urban Operations for Interscope, Geffen, and m Records, and a friend. This is Nicole Wiscarco. Nicole, thank you so much for being here. Thanks again for having me, Brandon. I'm, I'm honored. I'm humbled. Um, I think it's great that you're doing this. Thank you. Um, so thank you for, for putting this series on for all of us. Absolutely. Absolutely. So what we do with every guest, just to give, you know, an overview of who you are, just talk about your journey in the music industry, how you started, whether it's an internship or, or entry level position, um, and to where you are now into, again, one of the highest ranking positions um, of anyone um, within the music industry. Um, wow. I'm, I'm, thanks for the amazing introduction again. Um, so I guess just to start, I'm, I'm originally from L.A., I was born in LA and then I grew up in the Inland Empire, um, IE for anyone, anyone from IE or the 909, um, came back into LA when I was an, an undergrad at USC. And when I was there, I think like many young people, you know, you don't necessarily realize what all the options are available to you. You, ha you probably have an idea of like the things that you like doing, you know, like what your hobbies are, or like just you start understanding some of your passions, but you don't really know how those translate into jobs. Right. Um, so some of the things that I was just picking up on at the time was like, I, you know, I was always a big music fan. Um, I even actually played instruments growing up, believe it or not. But um, I would always read the, the CD booklet mm -hmm. and I would see the credits. And, you know, we don't have that now, but um, I'd see the credits in the back and I was always really fascinated by the people that were involved in those projects. Like, you know, if I, anything I was listening to that I was excited about, I was like, oh, these are the people that were behind this. Mm -hmm. So I was like, these are jobs. You mm -hmm. know, so it was, so that was, that was really interesting to me. Um, so I, I started to think more about like, oh, you know, maybe there's actually a career there. Um, you know, and, and it, it was just something in my mind. And while I was at USC, there was a program, there was a music business program. Yeah. Um, I wanted to change my major to that to explore it more. And my parents talked me out of it because they thought I couldn't, they're like, you're not gonna be able to find a job later. Mm -hmm. So I just, I read, I read the books by one of the professors that was teaching um, at the program and it was Don Passman. Mm -hmm. you know, and he has a book, everything you, you need to know about the music business. And it was like, it blew my mind. Um, so I was like, I really like, I'm just onto something. Um, so, so then it was like, you know what? I have friends that have internships, so I need to look into this more. Like I got to find an internship. So my first internship was not in music. It was just, it was in entertainment in general. I worked at a PR firm. Okay. Um, and that PR firm was run by two women that branched off and just started their own their own practice. So it, it was a great experience. Um, we worked with child actors uh -huh. and, you know, it was, it was kind of just like a taste into the direction I was going in because again, it was just like this constant um, affirmation that I was, you know, on the right path to my, to this journey. And I realized like for starters, we needed to understand our industry and our industry was film and TV. So we'd start our day by reading the trades. Uh -huh. um, our trades were like, you know, variety and um, everything that just was going on in film and TV. And it was, it was cool, but I, I would, I was like, I read the music trades. Right. So, you know, again, it was like, this is part of the job. This is really cool that, you know, at the time it was like, if I'm reading vibe every day already, and that's going to, you know, be relevant to my, to a job, like I would do this for free, mm -hmm. you know? So it was just like continuing to connect what I was passionate about with trying to find what that career journey is. Um, and simultaneously, my one of my best friends had an internship at a record label. She was working at Def Jam and interning in marketing. And her boss, John Stockton, who ran the marketing department, he was also um, throwing parties in LA so we would go to these parties, even though we were underage. Um, and again, we kept running into now the people that I'm reading about. 
um, that are like behind the music. And it was just, it was just like so fascinating to me at the time. And I just wanted to keep moving on that path. Right. So, but what happened was everybody, or, you know, most people know I, I took the path of, of law. Um, and that was something that I also had interest in from an early age, but, and, and I have, I have no regrets. I, I mean, I, I love that I took that, that path to get to where I'm at, but I think it also is a reflection of what options I knew were available to me growing up. You know, it's, it's, there's so many things you can do in this world today in music and in other industries that I think we just, we don't know people doing it. Right. So it's not something that you start dreaming about or researching because you just don't even know where to, this, where to start. So I stayed on that path of law, but I knew I needed to connect to music because I just am someone that always felt like you, you need to be passionate about what you're doing. Um, so I, I was like, I need to find these business affairs people that I see credited in these projects. And I need to learn more about that and see if that's a place where I can intern mm -hmm. and I could see if that's, that's the path. So I, I moved from LA to New York. Okay. Um, that was 2001. And I started law school at Brooklyn Law. And my second summer, because that's when you, when they really allow you to, to intern um, if you're full-time in law school, I, I applied to like, a hundred places, you know, from, from entertainment lawyers to labels, just everything. And at the time, like I probably was even sending, sending requests through, through fax, through mail, um, every way you could imagine. And I was just, you know, knocking down doors. I didn't have like, like a connection that was just going to like pull me in. So finally, out of all of those resp um, solicitations, I got a response from Island Def Jam at the time they were combined. And it was just from their HR department and they asked me to come in to interview for an, inter for an internship. So I, I come in and I'm like, I gotta get this. Like I gotta, you know, I gotta sell them. So I'm, I'm just fully prepared. I, I did all my research. I knew, I knew all the names of the execs and mm -hmm. um, the, you know, the entire roster. So I meet with the with the lawyers in the department, and the first lawyer I met with, Brian Robinson. Okay. He said um, one of the reasons he noticed my my resume was because I included in my resume that I had worked at a restaurant in LA that he was familiar with, um, and it was just it was a place he had frequented, and it stood out to him. So he was also he was like, aside everything in in your resume, like add it up, but like we get a million resumes that you know, they all are great candidates. And I was also interested in that. Um, and we realized that we had actually interacted, like I'd probably taken him to his table a million times mm -hmm. uh, when he was in LA. And it was just an interesting connection. And again, just, oh, I'm always thinking about things that are like useful for, for people. But um, I questioned whether I should include that in my resume, because it was like, how is that relevant to you know, an internship in business and legal affairs at a record label. But I was like, working in a restaurant was, I, there were a lot of valuable things from it. But I also found that, you know, it was a connection that I had to this person that was sitting in front of me in a position to give me the internship. So you just, you never know the interesting things about yourself that might lead to that door opening. So, you know, it's important to not narrow anything down and, and, you know, stay true to who you are and what your experiences are and, and, you know, share that with people. But that was how I got my foot in the door for that first internship. And when I got there, um, you know, I was also told I shouldn't expect to get hired after I graduate. And that really resonated with me too, because I'm not someone that sits well with being told I can't or no. Right. So I was just dead set on getting hired. So I spent the next few years just trying to figure out how to make myself valuable so that I could figure out a way to convince everyone that they needed to keep me. Mm -hmm. So that was, that was kind of the, the start of, of the journey. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you want me to go into, you know, more of what happened 
you know, mm-hmm. next. But that and was that was the foundation of how I got there. Well, that's phenomenal. Firstly, that's a that's an incredible beginning, you know, of the journey. You know, when I was at Red Lobster, no one cared about me. <laughs> um, but no, I, I, <laughs> what instrument did you play? I'm just curious. So I played, and and I I can't say I can't that I still am able to. I'm sure if I like, you know, had someone help me get get back in there again, but I played the violin for many years. I was first. And then I picked up the piano. Wow. Um, and then for a shorter period of time, I played the flute. Wow. Oh, okay. Okay. So we can use you in a studio session in case. Like I said, I would need someone to come in and, <laughs> and you know, but but it, it is something I think about because, you know, I, I really, particularly the piano and violin, you know, I, I, I really miss that I had that. Yeah. There's something important you said for anyone that's looking to get into the music industry and or need a refresher. All you need to know about the music business. That's the Donald Passman book that, that Nicole mentioned. Uh, phenomenal book um, that I recommend everyone reading if you're interested in this industry. So, so Nicole, tell us exactly what you do in your current role as Executive Vice President of Urban Operations for such a, an amazing label, an amazing roster of, of artists. Talk about your day to day. So, I mean, my day to day is always unique. And I think that that kind of goes for anybody in the business. There's no, there's no u- standard day. Um, for me, I, I utilize a lot of the different skills that I've acquired in, um, over the years. But I, one of the things I, I do is I oversee the a team on the urban side for, for our roster. Um, and, we, and we have, you know, an amazing um, large roster um, at the label on, you know, covering all genres. Um, and in addition to that, just the day-to-day operations. So, you know, that's, that's really just kind of keeping things flowing, mm-hmm. you know, and that involves everything from the deals, you know, with new signings. I use a lot of my experience on the business and legal affairs side and also, you know, my time working as an attorney outside of labels, uh, representing artists. Um, A lot of that comes into play. Um, You know, it's just putting out flyers is another good way to describe it. Um, And that just, that touches absolutely everything. You know, anything that comes up, it's, it's just, how are we going to make sure that, you know, this, we keep things moving smoothly. Um, we're addressing all, all of the issues. We're seeing it from a big picture perspective as opposed to just focusing in on one particular aspect of what's going on. Got it. You are a successful attorney. Why did you decide to, to come back into, into a label, into Interscope when you, were, you, you had a very, very successful career being an entertainment attorney versus being on the label side? Yeah, you know, and I get that question a lot. Um, You know, when I worked in business and legal affairs, so I did that for 14 years, if you count, if you count the the two years that I was um, still in law school. Um, And during that time, I worked with Def Jam, well, Island and Def Jam, which, you know, they became separate labels at one point, and also with Republic Records. And it was an incredible experience. I mean, I, I, love so many things about it and I had the opportunity to work with you know so many different um label executives as well as artists and and venture partners because you know when I started it was it was Lior Cohen and then L.A. Reid came and um you know then there was Barry Weiss and um you know um, the Republic team as well. So I got to work with all, all of those people from that side. But keep in mind, when you're working in business affairs, you represent the record label. Okay. You, you know, that's, that's your client. You know, you basically have one client and it's the company. Um, and, you know, you're collaborating with your artists and, and your venture partners, but you still represent the label. Mm-hmm. And I always felt like I, I just, I wanted to dig in further on, the artist representation side of it. I I always felt like I was, I would, I would get questions from artists and from managers um, just about the business and, you know, about their deals or about royalties and accountings. And I really enjoyed explaining that part, you know, and, and making sure that, that they understood what was going on, but that wasn't always, you know, 
I was explaining it from the perspective of, I, I don't represent you, you know? <laughs> so I wanted to explore what it would be like to work with artist teams directly, you right. know, be like that direct, you know, advocate for the artist and really like I'm part of their team. Like I'm, I'm truly, you know, of the, of the people that they're looking at that are like, you know, here's my go-to for, for everything in my, in my business. I wanted to be, um, on that side of it and just get that experience also get the entrepreneurial side of it right um because it's it's just a different structure financially as well and you're betting on yourself you know in a lot of ways and i wanted that experience um but i i just i really enjoyed being part of the artist team and 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 working with artists before they were even signed right which you know, I, I, that was exciting to me. It was, it was, there was, there was a huge part of me that was, that just felt like, you know, this is great. And I, I under, I know how to do this now, mm -hmm. um, you know, on the label side as an attorney, but what would it be like if I just jumped out, you know, on faith and I, one was spotting talent that I thought would make it and I'm investing my time in being part of their team really, really early in their process. And, and two, like, can I like succeed at this? Like, I think I could do it, but like, let's test it out and let's see, like, can I really get clients? Can, are the clients that I, I work with, are they, are they going to, you know, am I going to be able to get them deals? Like, how is this going to play out? And, and I also wanted to understand the other pieces of their business mm -hmm. in a more direct way um, than just from the label perspective, because now you're talking about like touring that, you know, you're obviously very familiar with um, the merchandise side of things. Um, you know, your, your artist might have a film and TV career. So I just wanted to get my hands in, in all of that. And I decided to leave and I had a great opportunity to join the law firm, Carol Guido and Groffman. Um, they brought me on as a partner and that was in 2016. And, you know, and it was, I knew them from clients that, that they had at the label and primarily I worked really closely with them on, on Kanye. So we had a, we had a long-term working relationship. So I went over there and it was everything I thought, you know, it was going to be. Also, the challenging part, I knew it wasn't going to be easy. Um, and, and I'm just, I'm so happy that, that I did that because I think it really added to just my overall experience and understanding mm -hmm. of all the different components of the, of the industry. You know, I, it was a different understanding having conversations with agents um, about our shared client than having the conversation with them from the label perspective, you know, so to get that, that understanding of it was just really incredible. And, and it was fulfilling having clients that you, you just, you saw them early. And then next thing you know, like you're getting, you know, their first deal done and, you know, you're figuring out the next stages of things. I, it just, it was, it was really exciting, but that's, that's um, kind of the reason why I decided to do that. I'm also not someone that's good with just like, you know, being yeah. in one, yeah. Like yeah. I, I'm, I always want to challenge myself and, and, and add to, you know, what I know. Yeah, I hear you on that. I mean, let me just say this, Nicole, you've had a diverse, phenomenal career. Um, and, and it feels like, you know, you, you've just gotten started. One of the things that you stated earlier on was you didn't really know where to go or what that first step would be. And I think we're in a new era where we are really focused and concentrated on finally building the next black, the next brown executives in this industry. What are you, what would you recommend to someone, you know, a young black girl, particularly, because I, I really, you know, the past few weeks, it's been you, it's been Ethiopia, Marsha, Juliet, like strong women of color in this industry. And, and that's something that, you know, was done on purpose because I think it's, it's important for, for us to recognize all the accomplishments of what you've done. What would you say to that young woman that's in college that doesn't know what that first step is to get into the industry? Well, I, I have a lot of things to say to her. Yeah. Um, I mean, one, you know, even just talking about the women that, that you just mentioned, 
we all had different journeys mm -hmm. to get here and there's no one unique path you know and, and I, I think it's great to to understand and, and learn about everyone's journey but you also have to realize like you're not you're not going to just follow in the exact footsteps of this person and that's like the beautiful thing is that you can create your own path mm -hmm. and you should never feel discouraged if you're thinking like okay she did this and that that door isn't necessarily opening up right now so now i'm just at a loss what do i do i think the great thing about this this business is there's so many different ways there's so many different avenues right. and in that process and that journey you're constantly learning things that are going to be beneficial for the next step and you shouldn't you know if, you, if for example if you're thinking hey i really want to be an agent mm -hmm. you know i'm just fascinated by the touring business but nothing is opening up there like as far as an internship or an entry-level job but you find something in you know i don't know in music publishing don't be deterred that you're thinking, hey, like, but my dream is to be an agent and this isn't that. Because the information that you're going to gain from that experience in publishing, I promise you it's going to be beneficial to you, you know, when you get to that agent role. Or you might find that like, hey, I thought that was what I wanted to do, but I didn't even know this existed. And I really, and I really, really love it. So that's, that's for one, don't be discouraged by there not being a set path or, or thinking that you're following a path and, and maybe it's not panning out. And the other thing I would say, I guess to that point too, is to just be, when be a student of the business again, you know, I, I think all, all the women that you've, that you've interviewed, like, I mean, they've all, they're all, they all really know, like they know their shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So like, you know, it's not, it's not just, the networking it's not just the opportunity you know study what you're doing you know know it well under and understand all of it understand as much of what's going on in the business as possible because if you look at it from just you know one narrow perspective you might be missing things that are going to make you perform better right. at the area that you're you're working in um so that's another thing i would suggest and as far as like getting in um I, I think that that's always like the big elusive like you know question like how do i get that first foot in like i just need that that you know that door to be cracked open a little bit and i can't figure that out um i i think i mean one it's it's a lot easier now with social media to just find people but the biggest thing is not just finding people and meeting them you know ev everyone's busy and to get them to just pay attention and to figure out like, okay, how am I going to help pull you in? If you can find ways to help them, that's a great way to stand out. You know, how can I offer, you know, my expertise right now? I'm a college student, you know, what can I do for you? Think about those things that you can do for this individual um, now. And I promise you, they're going to be responsive and want that help. And I'm sure there's something that, that you have access to that is going to be helpful to them. You know, whether it's just organizing information or an event that, you know, maybe they're going to be in your area for that you want to offer to help with, or, you know, maybe, maybe it's taking like a, a poll of information, you know, like a, a research group from, from your, your college colleagues that can help with, you know, this is, we want to give you our thoughts on this new developing artists you're working on, if that's helpful, just try to think of ways that you can offer something. Yeah. And that's always a great way to get, get your foot in the door. Absolutely. So let me ask before we end, um, who are you excited about right now, Interscope? Any releases you want to talk about or can you talk about on this IG Live? Man, I'm, I mean, I'm excited about so many and I like, I don't want to leave anyone out. <laughs> um, you know, right now, I mean, I'm really, I'm excited about black mm -hmm. right now. I'm just, I'm just thinking of things that are, you know, just released. Um, you know, we have a ton of new artists. Um, I love little Papa, Justin Rari. Um, you know, I, I honestly, Brandon, like, I really don't want to miss anyone, but I like, I, 
I will say that I'm incredibly passionate about our roster. I think we put a lot of thought into the artists that we work with across the board and we sign artists that as a, as a team we're really excited to work with um, because it's, it's a, it's a long-term partnership yeah. and um, we have some amazing artists that I just, I feel very blessed that we get to work with them and I feel blessed that we get to work with their, their teams, their managers, um, is yourself, you know, I love Brianna. yeah, you know, we love Brianna. Um, it's, we're just, we're very, we're very fortunate to work with the artists and managers and, and partners that we get to work with. For sure. Nicole, our time is up. Um, I could probably go on for another hour and a half. I mean, I think there were so many gems that you dropped and I learned um, a lot here. So I thank you for making time um, to be a part of this series. And, and on behalf of Live Nation Urban, you know, I know what Interscope is doing, what Universal Music Group is doing in general. Um, and just know that you have an ally here uh, with Live Nation Urban and whatever you need, we are a platform, we are a voice that will support all the endeavors um, that you are doing. So thank you for being here. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Absolutely. This has been another episode of Meet the Execs. I've been your host, Brandon Pankey. Thank you for joining us. We'll be back next Friday with a new episode and a new guest. Thank you again, Nicole. Thank you. Yeah.